morning prayer. It's a wonderful, beautiful morning. Um, it's that time of year where it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful day, but crisp, you know, when you get that bit of a bite in the morning. And um, I know one or two people have already put on Facebook and one or two other places that they've already, even though we're not out of September, some people put the heating on. So, um, but I do, I do think, um, even though we, we know it gets colder at this time of year, it, it, it is a beautiful time of year as well when we get days like this and we see the changing colours in the leaves. So here we are, morning prayer on Tuesday. Um, I'm sure by now you've got your apps and um, or your words for morning prayer. Before we begin the service as it's published, let's keep a moment's quiet to still our hearts in the presence of Almighty God. Lord, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would come and fill our minds, our hearts. Fill this day with your guidance as we seek to live for the glory of the Father. Amen. And so, Lord, Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, May the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <coughs> Blessed be God forever. And so we come to a song of trust in God based on Psalm 42 verses 1 to 7. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where now is your God? Now when I think on these things I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So we have two Psalms today, Psalm 34 and then followed by Psalm 150. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon him and be radiant and your faces shall not be ashamed. The poor soul cried and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Fear the Lord, all you his holy ones, for those who fear him lack nothing. Lions may lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is there who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the troubles of the righteous, from them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps all their bones, so that not one of them is broken. But evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and will condemn none who seek refuge in him. O oh, taste and see, that the Lord is gracious. Send your holy angels to watch over us, O oh God, that on our lips will be found your truth and in our hearts your love, so that we may ever taste your goodness in the land of the living through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And then Psalm 150. Maybe you're wondering why Psalm 34 and Psalm 150 today in the church calendar, it's St. Michael and all angels, which is that reflection of that unseen conflict which goes on in the spiritual realm and Psalm 34 was a reminder there that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him so we are promised protection and deliverance and then we come to Psalm 150 which is a fitting way for the book of Psalms to end because it's about magnifying and praising the Lord let everything that has breath praise the Lord Hallelujah. O oh, praise God in his holiness. Praise him in the firmaments of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the blast of the trumpet. Praise him upon the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancers. Praise him upon the strings and pipe. Praise him with ringing cymbals. Praise him upon the clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. God of life and love, whose son was victorious over sin and death, make us alive with his life, that the whole world may be resound with your praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We continue with our canticle, which is based on Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 to 11. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. 
We turn to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving breath, seed for sowing and bread to eat, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. A New Testament reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. About that time, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belong to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with the sword. After he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly, and the chains fell off his wrist. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realise that he, what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you would inspire our minds, our hearts, our souls, our spirits, Speak to us and feed us this day through your word in that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, 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 well. Two, um, or if you like, three very contrasting um, scriptures this morning. Psalm 34. So we'll talk about the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. And we've seen that um, be, being fulfilled in this reading in Acts. So you can sort of relate Psalm 34 and Acts together in terms of angelic intervention. But where does Psalm 150 fit into this? Well, um, we are told that actually the, the, the heartbeat of heaven is the eternal praise of God. And, and one of the functions of um, being in, in, in heaven <laughs> functions is that the right word i don't know we'll be in this atmosphere of constant praise and, and life and beauty and, and things which are too wonderful for us to even imagine and the angels will play a great part in in that praise and that exaltation of almighty god and and some people therefore um would would believe that um, satan who was originally called lucifer was his um, great shining angel whose authority was to, to give praise to God 
and perhaps he was the, the angel who was in charge of praising God and, and got a bit proud and thought maybe some of the praise should go to me and in his pride his arrogance and a rebellion he was cast out of the presence of God but praise in terms of the heartbeat of heaven is that when we live a life of praise and devotion to God then we open our lives to the supernatural and the miraculous and the supernatural and the miraculous includes the angelic realm there are countless numbers of angels around us and with us we can't see them but we're surrounded by the heavenly host in some miraculous way and it won't actually be till we get to heaven that we will realize how much god almighty has protected us from the forces of evil there are some people who um have been given glimpses into this heavenly realm where they, they've as it were um just had a window in into what's going on in the supernatural realm and, and there are there are those people that um i've certainly come across i've never seen an angel but i do know that there are many instances in my life where um, I know that God has delivered me and rescued me in all kinds of different ways and just at the right time and so we, we, we have this this account here but what I was thinking of just earlier on as I was reading Psalm 150 basically the, the psalmist is exalting the whole of creation but exalting people that whatever whatever we have use it to praise god so you know dance singing music musical instruments the very breath that we have use it to praise the lord and that is a point of um, tension and sadness for many in the church because there are some people who would argue that we should be praising God forever and, um, you know, there should be nothing that's stopping us praising and worshipping God. And I sympathise with that. But there are also other Bible passages that tell us that we, we ought not to please ourselves. You know, we were listening to Philippians on Sunday that, um, you know, Christ, who being very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but humbled himself and it's in the epistles you see it in Romans you see it in 1 Corinthians that if there's something I'm doing or an action that I I'm about to undertake will cause offense to somebody else needlessly then I, I, I need to hold back for the sake of the other person which leads to another tension because because Jesus is is the healer and we're in the midst of a pandemic and and you know i i do pray blessings and, and i do pray that um god god will reach out to people and grant his healing touch 